Hey, good morning, everybody. It's Bob Fibs, the retail doctor. Thanks for joining me here on Sunday, July the 19th. I'm thrilled to have you here today. And uh, if you are just being here for the first time, please type in your uh, where you're joining me in from, where in the world, because we have people all over uh, pretty much every continent on Sunday mornings, particularly this today, we're also going to be joined uh, with LinkedIn. So do me a favor, type in where you're joining me from as I wait for everybody else to find it. Heidi Henson, you are the first one to type in. Thanks so much for joining me today, all the way from North Carolina. Appreciate you being here. Uh, and by the way, along the way, those of you who, as you join, you can always give me a little thumbs up or you can give me uh, applause on LinkedIn as well. You know, this week I shared with you that I am doing the Tony Robbins uh, Unleash the Power Within. Normally, this is a four day event. Uh, right now, it is virtual, which can, you know, I thought it was bad for me as a public speaker that I wasn't going to be on planes. Well, Tony does over 115 uh, speeches uh, a, a year. And so imagine that whole thing just goes away and he had to reinvent himself and come up with it virtually. And I appreciated that. Um, he was finding able to find a way to have, there's 22,000 of us, I think, doing this virtually, whereas in person, it'd only be 10,000. And so some of you asked questions about like, well, what's it like? And tell me, you know, what are you learning? And I thought uh, I would share with you a story. It's a little little personal. So I'll, I'll say hi to a few people before I get into that. But uh, a lot of you on, on board this morning. So do me a favor, give me some love. Yeah, they, this part of our, our kit, which I thought was awesome. They had little sticks you could hold up the the, the thumb or the uh, heart in any event. Uh, so let me just say, hey, Ralph, glad you're here today from Crystal Cove, Sharon, Heidi, uh, Susan, Jason, uh, Leone, Gollum from uh, the UK, sweet. LinkedIn user from Singapore. I hope you have a name there, LinkedIn user. Uh, Lois from Dubai, Yusuf from Nigeria, uh, LinkedIn user Nigel from, oh, hey, Nigel, glad you're here from England. Uh, Tristan, glad you're here, and there's a lot of other ones as well. So, uh, Tony, um, uh, I'll get to his story that uh, why I share this story. But um, let's just say that I did not have the best relationship with my dad. My dad was a civil rights activist, and there's three brothers, and we were beaten up a lot of times for things he would say on TV or write, and um, it was just not a great childhood. And I grew up pretty much hating um, what he did. It was like the fourth son in our household, prettier looking, more accomplished, got the trophy and got all his attention and not us. So I've carried that forward into my 40s and probably 50s. And um, But one time <clears throat> I decided I'm gonna go to the family reunion, which I had avoided for probably 20 years and try to make peace with my dad. And uh, so it's way up in the mountains in uh, Virginia. It's an old hotel from the 1860s, part of the Episcopal Church up there called Orkney Springs. And it's not a luxurious place. It's like two small cots, you know, singles. Like if you were 12, it'd be fine. And I'd spent the whole day hearing him go on about his hurts and his disappointments. And that's the story that he loved to tell over and over again. And I was so frustrated. I'd been on it for 12, year, 12 uh, hours. And I'm like, this is a mistake. And I go to my room and it's hot and uh, I'm pissed off and I've brought that into me and I own it. And it's like, yes, I shouldn't have come. You know how that gets. And uh and so I want to I want to open the window, and the window is right across uh, one of these tiny, you know, single bed. And I go to reach over, and I push it up, and it won't go. And I push it up again, and it won't go. And with all that anger of the day, I just uh, and I pushed it up as hard as I could, and all of a sudden, it's like I'd been electrocuted. My whole arm just started uh, vibrating, and I could see the muscles just tw tw twing twingling twitching and uh, freaking out. And I'm like, what the hell did I do? But I don't sp run down and get down the mountain and go down to a, uh, uh, a mercy ward. No, I can handle this. No big deal. And uh, I'm in pain. And I had I had just had back surgery not long ago. So I had pain pill and I took a couple of those. And as I go to bed, I can still feel my arm is just, uh, I don't know what I've done, but uh, something bad, right? So um it's kind of like Monty Python. It's only a flesh wound. Well, to make a long story short, I go back to Los Angeles. I spend the rest of the time with my dad and I'm still holding on to this grudge. And I was right. I shouldn't have. Right. And uh, so I go back to Los Angeles and I go to the doctor and he's, he says, well, let me take an x-ray. I go, yeah, nothing's broken. I don't think an x-ray is going to do it. And he's like, well, there's nothing broken. I go, yeah, but I can see this bump down here. This shouldn't be like this. And he's like, no, um, you know, if it hurts, uh, what we'll do is we'll put it in a whatever kind of like a 
a stretch cast kind of thing, not plaster Paris. And, you know, if it gets worse, let me know. And so he puts that on. And when I go to take a shower uh, the next morning, my whole arm is black and blue and yellow. And I'm freaking out a little bit. But it doesn't hurt. It just doesn't hurt. And so a couple of weeks later, I finally I call the guy and I am keep leaving messages. He doesn't call. And uh, so finally I get pissed off and I just find a surgeon. I just find a surgeon and I go to him and I go, I think something's wrong. And he's like, I can tell you that's that's probably your uh, uh, bicep tendon that's down there that you're looking at. And I should have seen you four months ago, uh, four weeks ago, but uh, I probably won't ever be able to put it back again but you need to get in surgery tomorrow. So we go in, I'm laying on the stretcher and the nurse asked me, so what's it, uh, tell me, how did this happen? And I tell her the whole story and I said, yeah, I shouldn't have done that. And I should have gone down to the thing and I should have gone down the mountain that night and I shouldn't have put myself in that place and I shouldn't have been angry. And she stops me, she goes, wow, you like to beat yourself up a lot, don't you? And I was like, uh, I guess I do. And uh, so when I come out of surgery, which took, I think seven hours because it had, it so far down, it had really, um, to reconnect them took forever. And I put on my pants and in my pants, I was looking for it this morning, but I didn't have time. She had written on a card, wow, you sure beat yourself up a lot, your nurse. And I thought about that this weekend when I went with Tony, because he says, divorce the story and marry the truth divorce the story. We keep these stories in our bodies and our lives. And then we just look for things to, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we just own it and own that story. Well, divorce the damn story. What's the truth? The truth was who made my, who made me miserable? Me. And who's the one that held on to all that stuff? Me. And who did that doing to hit my dad? Not in the least. So why do we do that? Because it's a pattern that we've grown to say is normal. And I'm done with that. So if you see a newfound confidence in me, if you hear a little bit more of a strut in my voice, um, I have decided that I am uh, not going to do those kind of things. And I'm going to be having more fun in my life. And I encourage anyone who thinks that Tony Robbins might be somebody from them, you certainly should uh, consider it because uh, he has made millions change their lives. So uh, just a quick hi to a bunch of other people here. We have uh, Bora. I've got... Uh, Margo, I got Pedro, I got Jenny, I got uh, Cheryl, excellent, Gary, glad you're here today, Roger, great, Aaron, hey, glad you're here, you're actually in town today, great, so uh, I have several questions here that I'm going to answer for you today, by the way, if you like anything I have to say, give me a thumbs up, or you can also heart me if you want, uh, or you could just type in the box and say yes, if something that resonates with you, because ultimately we are trying to find our way through this new normal and we're doing it together. So uh, David says, uh, our lease is up. Any recommendations for terms on signing a new lease? So David, uh, I would assume that you're not a major retailer because you probably have banks of lawyers if you are and AI has figured things out. Uh, but quite simply look at having a percentage of sales and every market is different and every uh, um, landlord is different. But I would say decide to do a long-term lease or don't do it. We have got to get out of this idea. We are settling. We are waiting. Our duck and cover. Oh my God, it's all going to end. I am done with it. I actually deleted my one of my news apps the other day and I didn't even pick it up today and I feel great. And I'm here to tell you that we have got to commit to saying no more bullshit. We have to be able to call it out and say, I'm not going to go down that road. I'm not going to go through and say, oh, it's because of somebody else. Let's own it. Let's fix it. And let's look at the future and let's go do it. Because that's all that's possible right now. If you don't believe that, then don't follow me and get the hell off and go, you know, watch somebody who does cat videos and tells you it's going to be great. Just tell yourself it's going to be great. No, it's not going to be great. It's going to be all of us to do the hard work to fix what the hell broke. And you know what broke is customer service. What broke is hiring people who are talented, people that give a damn, people that are passionate. Restaurant owners, I see you, several of you here follow me too. What about the days of a professional server whose goal was to make somebody else's die day? Now we gave up on that, Bob. That's hard. There's 20 million people who are unemployed right now. Why the hell are you settling? Why the hell do you tell me, oh, well, you know, they've been with me for 20 years. We can't rock the boat. Why the hell can't you rock the boat? Do you think she's happy? He's happy being there 20 years? Stuck? Stuck as you are going into that store every day saying, oh, I hope someone walks in the door and their mind just melts away into sadness and goes backward into all the crap story 
and they marry the story again. Oh, it's terrible to be in retail. It's horrible for us in brick and mortar. Yeah, it'll never be good again. The good old days. Let's divorce that crap. Let's look at the truth. Who's the only one responsible for your happiness right now? You. You, not me. You. All right. There you go. Thanks for the pet retail that says nothing wrong with a good cat video. Very funny. All right. Kelly says, I'm experiencing a lot of we are just happy to be out of the house customers who are using the store as something to do to escape the heat. I also get the same thing during spring break with moms looking for something to do to entertain the kids. How do you handle it? Well, up your energy, Kelly. And again, unfortunately, you are going to be hearing me. <laughs> in the middle of this transformation where there's probably a lot of energy coming at you, I can imagine. But let's claim the moment. Let's be glad that somebody walked into your damn store. Let's make a party for them. Let's jump up and down and say, holy crap, I've got to change her from, well, we're just looking around, hoping something stands, to really connecting and finding a way into that jaded customer. How to not be this passive, you know, oh, let me know if you need anything. We're just looking. Because it gives you that check mark, like, well, I asked and they're not. And well, it's hopeless. You know, she's a mom with kids. They just want to get out of the heat. It wasn't my fault. I didn't do anything wrong. You know, all these people are just looking. Bullshit. Retail went up 7.5% in June. Retail went up. 7.5% in June. Those of you who keep think, telling me how, oh, you know, it's so slow, it's terrible that you're acting as if it's something else that somebody is telling you, I won't buy today. Look, they wouldn't go into a store if they potentially die. They wouldn't have made that, that jog unless they thought there was a, hap a chance for happiness or hope or possibility or something that's gonna make their day better. And yet we check the box. Oh, well, you know, I asked, you know, Jane, she's really good with customers. Hi. She always says, hi, honey, how you doing today? And, you know, people just blow her off. I'm tired of hearing this stuff on these videos because why don't you change it? Why don't you find a way to claim the moment and say, dang it, let's step up. Let's be a retailer. Let's be a merchant and realize I got to make their day before they're going to make mine. But no, we check the box. And then you guys all get on your little, your little, um, your little uh, private groups and talk about how it sucks to be you. And then everybody else is like, oh yes, it really sucks. And then someone's like, well, we could be positive. No, that's bullshit, not in my market. And then we have to put in the masks and it's this and it's that, another wave's coming. And then we have to just drain all the hope out of it. And then we're left stuck with it. And you go to those groups because that must fill something you have inside of you. That's the sad truth. Not my fault. So Kelly, if you're done with that, if you're done with that, if you want to commit to doing better, then sign up for salesrx.com. I train you exactly how to build rapport. I tell you that it's about making somebody else's day. The party is in the aisles. I give you the exact steps you need to follow. But, you know, people are like, well, you know, I've tried. You know, I tried. I tried. Uh, you know, I read your book. Knowing isn't doing. Because if you were doing it, you'd be doing it. If you knew it, you'd be doing it. Do you join a gym and say, like, I worked out yesterday. Therefore, I'm done. No, you train every day. Remember how I told you back in March when everything was melting down, the thing I was looking for was when baseball would restart. The Yankees spring training was last night. We're seeing the green shoots come up. I get it. We are in winter. I get it. We are in winter. Trust me, as a speaker who's used to spending their life on a plane, I get it. But you know what? I am already three months out saying, where do I need to be? What do I need to be doing? What do my customers need to be doing? What do I need to help my customers? What are they dealing with? And how am I going to get them to change? Because I got the products. So I'm not worried about that. It's those of you who sit on the fence day, week after week with me and you sit there and say, well, you know, um, I, 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 I'm just not ready. It's not the money. You're afraid of change. You're afraid of saying, I'm done with being unhappy. Yeah, I want to own this story of being unhappy. I want to be a part of it's unhappy. I want to get my friends to tell me the same damn story. And I'm going to be comfortable in this pile of shit. And then I'm going to be able to say, it's not my fault. You know, they're just looking. Not my fault. I think that might be a rant, but I'm not quite sure. So, Kelly, I appreciate you saying uh, thank you because it's not a design on you. You understand that? I've been doing this for three years and I'm here to be of service to all of you, but I'm here to hold you to higher standards. Most of us, our standards are at the bottom. You are settling for people who don't want to work for you. And there's a couple of you on this call that knows that because I've heard what's happened when you fired them and what the kind of people they did and what they did to your business. And you put up with it because you said it's easier to keep crap than it is to shovel it. Well, you know what? You shovel it once and it's gone and then something new can come up. 
Okay. Give me some love. Give me some love. There you go. Say yes. Do something different. Do something different. But you know what? If you're not, then what are you going to do? Are you going to sit there and say, oh, well, you know, Bob, he was on a rant today. It was really funny. Let me let me share this. Let me go back to my kitten videos, but I'll share this. Why don't you take action on it? Because uh, you're still in that story. It sucks to be you. And I'm telling you, I've been there. I'm not there, but I've been there and I've owned different stories. We all own different stories. But ultimately, I had to go through and rip the bicep on my arm to learn that lesson. All right, Stephen, a lifetime ago, like January, <laughs> experiential retail was the hot new concept. Stores like Slow Mo, Can Candytopia Camp, even the newly imagined Toys R Us were the big news. Absolutely. And I've shared several of those in my blog on retail trends. Do you think experiential retail will survive and what it might look like? So, Stephen, uh, that's a great question. Um, I think in the short term, things are going to be more virtual. I My hats off are to Camp and Walmart, that pub, that uh partnership was so inspired and brilliant that they got these actors to act as camp counselors as a partnership with that uh, store in Manhattan uh, and to do it with Walmart and to create these outdoor events where it was, uh, I think Neil Patrick Harris was teaching something, I don't know if it was Beyonce, I forget who was teaching uh, crafts, uh, it doesn't matter. The point was they knew that that still had that need. They just had to deliver it differently. I I think that virtual is fine. I am doing more virtual, obviously, than ever. And short term gives us that. But there is nothing like being in person. So I think uh, experiential, uh, to me, is going to be more teaching. And the idea that you're going to put a rock climbing wall in the middle of a store on Madison Avenue is going to save it. I think people realize that's probably not true. But you know what? A lot of retailers are still stuck in the idea that let's distract them. Let's put a bar in the store so they can get drunk while they're shopping and maybe they'll buy more. Or, uh, oh, we've got curbside. Curbside's great. You know, we're, um, I got a blog coming out tonight on the impact of your store exterior. I hope you'll read it. But uh, quite simply, uh, people who are making this big push to curbside and saying this is going to be what's going to have to happen Black Friday and Christmas and everything, you're cutting out 50% of your add-ons and your uh, ability to upgrade and suggestively sell. I don't know how that makes sense. And I don't know what the great customer experience is. I drive uh, to your store, your mall. I stay in the parking lot, queue up, wait 30 minutes, whatever. Somebody comes out, puts it in my back. Oh, that's great customer service. That is a road to unhappiness and low margin. And if, But yet, if your employees are crap and they aren't making upsells and they aren't understanding that you got to be able to compare and contrast and build rapport and give a store tour and greet people with an open heart and not just sit there, can I help you something? No. Then maybe it doesn't matter. But I'm telling you that with an engaged crew, we can make the difference. I get it, we're in winter, but I'm telling you the next season is spring, which is where the new shoots come up and growth is there and people are energized. And that's what I have my eyes on. So I hope that helps a little bit. Susan, wondering what your stance is on closing the store. If, two, if an employee tests positive, at least two local restaurants have closed for a few days to sanitize for this reason. It hasn't hit us, but if it does, not sure if it would be a HIPAA violation to announce an employee positive. This may be a legal rabbit hole. I don't want to go down. I'm still on the fence about the moral and legal way to deal with this if and when it comes our way. Susan, my guess is the public, uh, you if the public health service says you have an employee who contracted uh, COVID, my guess is the decision will be made for you because they're going to make sure that everybody who worked with that person is going to take two weeks off. You're going to have to explain it some way. So a HIPAA violation would be if you said Bob Fibbs. Uh, you know, tested positive. But if you have a question, always ask a lawyer because I'm not a lawyer. Kim, no staff. Business is great, but staff is nowhere to be found. What are some ideas to find a good applicant pool? What advice would you give to retain the good ones? 20 years in business and really different. So Kim, uh, obviously I think social media is the best place you can find people because they, you can target them to people in your area and have a compelling offer. But frankly, you know, when is small retail going to give up the small mind? Actually, all retailers, the small mind is I got to fill a shift. And why don't we go through and find people who give a damn to connect, to be passionate, to um, make somebody else's day before their own? Why are we still coddling people and not training them or onboarding them? You know, when I work with bigger uh, organizations and we're talking about where sales or X fits into their onboarding, it's because they have a system. It's like, well, how is it going to work with HR and how does this plug in? And it's like, oh, this is how it all fits in. And then sometimes I work with other 
uh, retailers is like, oh, well, you know, where's your onboarding system? We don't have one. What? Well, we just have them shadow. Well, then you pretty much have said my fate is in it's it's not something that I have a responsibility for. It's they'll just come to us. Why don't we stop the coddling? Why don't we stop the coddling of yourself? Why don't you raise your standards to say, you know, good is only going to get me poor results. I got to do excellent, which means I got to find people who are passionate. I've got to interview with passion. Oh, you know what? In sales, there actually is a whole course on how to hire smarter. Nine lessons on all the stuff you shouldn't be doing that you're probably doing right now, like hiring friends and asking availability and asking goals in the future and a bunch of other stuff that will not determine their success. So if you wanna have people uh, work for you, you better have a system that shows we got our act together. You better train religiously because again, you don't go to the gym and say, oh, I worked out last week. No, you have to work out every week if you wanna get results. And if you the other question was, um, what advice would you have to retain the good ones? I'd say step up if you work here. You know, this idea that it's a, a right to work at a retail store because you've been there long enough has got to go. It's a privilege to work at a retail store, to work around pretty things. And right now it's challenging and I get it and I get it, I get it, I get it. But at the end of the day, if you're settling for poor results and you think it's all somebody else's fault, I got news for you. Look in the mirror. So I hope that helps, Kim. Uh, Cheryl, yes. <laughs> George, I love the drive. Nicole, short term, I'm doing action retail retailers Wednesday. Uh, yeah, physical is still preferred, uh, uh, but after COVID, that's great. Jen, thanks for the insight about curbside. Again, curbside, when you're locked down and all you have is curbside, then hey, great. And if you, and you need a website to do that, fabulous. But this idea that... Um, Macy's is going to somehow resurrect itself to by having curbside delivery to mall. It's like, what planet are you on? How many people have to be able to queue up for that to really move sales? And while we're at it, <laughs> I was reading how the Neiman Marcus uh, CEO and uh, Jane Siltow with uh, JC Penney are getting their bonuses as they're whacking employees at corporate level and at the stores. How do you possibly leave a, lead a team like that? Be like you driving up to your business with a brand new Range Rover right now with all the bling on it and everything and the options and uh, you drive up and you go into your store and it's right there and like your 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 license plate is like, I'm the best or something as your employees come in. Like, wow, what does that say about us? You have to manage the optics. So again, stop hiring bodies, find people who are passionate that give a damn like I do. Why don't you give a damn like I do? Let that sink in for a minute. LinkedIn user, it will survive. It will survive. It's not a matter of surviving, dude, or do us. Yeah, of course, it's blending digital, strong social community. Make no mistake, eighty percent, ninety percent is still done in a store. So why the hell aren't you upping your skills right now? And that goes for big and small retailers. When I hear the big retailers, oh, they're cutting staff, cutting training, cutting training programs. What are you going to do? Just leave the lights on and expect that people are going to give a damn? Because if you don't get in state, when you walk in, you know the difference between having a coach. You walked into memory of that teacher that you had in high school that made you really give a damn about chemistry or geology or math or something where everyone else was crap. That's what we're looking for. You've got to find it in here and be willing to work for it. And if you're not, then the... Society owes you nothing, no profit, no job, nothing. But this idea that retail will survive, that's bullshit. Retail is going to do great. Retail is going to do great. And those that don't probably shouldn't have been in retail because you're when you commit to it, your mind will find a way. We are in the tyranny of the shoulds. Well, you know, I should do this and we should wait till there's a vacuum. Bullshit. Do it. Commit to it. That's all of you. I should go to Tony Robbins more often, I think. <laughs> I just have a little bit more. Those of you who've been generous enough to stay on here with me. Give me some love, damn it. Give me something. Give me something here. Give me something here. Macy's is not done. I think leadership is done. Macy's better figure it out. You have a storied brand. You know, they were bought by... Uh, uh, another brand called Federated. They they brought together May Company, which was a California brand. They put them both together and they made them into beige. Macy's one of the greatest brands in the world. Why the hell doesn't somebody give a damn about it? Why the hell don't the employees rise up and say, this is bullshit? 
why the hell don't they have the 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 capacity to say it's about making somebody else's day but that starts with our employees instead of well i got my check oh well sorry about that because it's a we moment i've said this to you since march we are in a we moment not a me moment and when i see ceos do that it's talk about being bankrupt on many ways we're in a we moment that goes for you big and small ones you have to find a way to make a commitment. Are you here or not? Are you willing to do it? Are you willing to step up and let me train you? Or are you going to sit back and say, well, you know, that might take time and money and I, I really don't want to do it. Good. Then just be honest. Just be honest. When people walk in your store, goes, it doesn't matter whether you buy from me today because I checked out long ago and I really just want to sit here. My story of it sucks to be me. And so I called up my other retailers who also sucks to be them. And we have a whole Facebook group for it sucks to be us. And you know what we do? We share Bob's uh, posts every now and then. But, you know, a lot of people say it, ours is different. It doesn't work like that in men's suits. It doesn't work like that with toys. It doesn't work like that in whatever. I have clients who are up 2 and 300% right now. Are you, are you settling for crumbs when you could have a whole feast? It's only you, baby. It's only you. <sighs> Top Fan Devi says, please share what the virtual Tony Robbins event is like and what your biggest at home has been. Inspiration and innovation. And also Top Fan Rebecca says, share a few of your top takeaways from Tony, the ones that you we need to hear right now. Uh, first off, I am not Tony Robbins. I am Bob Fibbs. And so what lands for me may be different than you. The one thing that Tony has said since I first came in contact him almost 30 years ago is you have to see the results before you take action. So for example, with sales RX, unless you believe that I can raise sales by five, 10, 20%, I can increase your number of items in the basket by 30%. Unless you believe that your employees are trainable, then you're gonna say, well, I hope this works. Imagine going into, uh, you're at your wedding and you turn to your mom as you're, as you're walking down, or your dad as you're walking down the aisle, I hope this works. Nice. Imagine going to get, uh, you're going into the plane and you're, you're passed by the pilot passed by you and the stewardess goes, oh, we're looking forward to flying with you today. And he goes, well, I hope we get there. See, hope isn't good enough anymore. You either commit or, you're, or you don't. To me, that's probably what I'm going to change as a result of Tony is it's about commitment. What are you willing to do? What are you willing to do? And be honest with yourself. What are you willing to do? Because ultimately, um, you know, somebody said, well, I can't believe you go to Tony Robbins. Of course I go to Tony Robbins. What the hell's your point? I have many mentors. Don't you? I mean, mentors, I pay money to mentors that I say, here's something I want to fix or I want to do because you know why success leaves clues. People that have been there before can show you the way much quicker. I can take 30 years, 40 years of what I've learned in retail and condense it down to you so that you can understand it like that. You don't have to go through all the pitfalls and have people say like, oh yeah, that didn't work or that did work. And ultimately, when you do that, you realize that proximity is what builds results. Because you are close to them, you're able to pick that up, whether you buy the program and then you also follow them on, on Facebook, but you're willing to come into that world at a deeper level instead of just surf along at the top and go like, oh, he makes me feel bad. I like him, right? And that's probably why when we're creating the Sales RX Challenge, which is going to debut in August, just know it. It's going to be a program. It's going to be very cool. And it's all about that. But if you're tired of just feeling shitty about it, of feeling powerless, of feeling that there's nothing you can do, it's hopeless, and you're tired of the excuses, then put it on your calendar to watch. Mid-August, we'll have a webinar that'll announce the, the system and, and how you can participate in it. So um, I, if you have any questions, you can jump that in. Uh, hello from Bangladesh. Awesome. Whitney, bravo. Thanks so much for that. Uh, Melanie, I love your kick butt approach. Oftentimes it gives me the boost I need. I'm wondering if it's ever appropriate to give the same kind of passionate kick butt or are you in or out? Talk to my team. Melanie, why not? What do you have to lose? Because the ones who are out don't give a damn anyway. <laughs> They're going to say, you know. So, uh, you know, my dad passed several years ago and I'm so glad that I was able to divorce that story and actually look at the truth before he died and ultimately to be grateful about that. And that's my final message to you today is you need to marry the truth and divorce the story. Otherwise you're living a life that just is limited and it's not fun and you don't end up having a way to get around it.
And I hope that resonates with you today. Let's just find a way to do it. I need you to either commit or not commit. And those of you who've seen Sales or X and you haven't taken action, then look inside and say, why is that? What's the story you're telling yourself? What's the story that you've told yourself so much that you've said, this is the truth. With If you really looked at it, it's probably a lie. It's probably something you did to make yourself feel better. But you know what? The thing that makes you feel better is when you find the key and you move towards that commitment. And that's what I want for you today. So if you like what I have to say, please make sure that you give me some uh, type in and say some love and uh, give me some hearts and some that. Because unless you take action from what I did today, you just wasted a half hour with me. And you probably might as well just grabbed a beer and got out on your boat and tried to ignore the fact that you're not doing enough work. And you know what? You'll end like 90% of other people who say, oh, I don't have to do anything. Entrepreneurs are out there doing it every day. But it only comes, success only comes in small parts. So if you want to join me, you know, having that proximity breeds results, then you can certainly join me on Sales or X. I'm Bob Fibbs, the Retail Doc. Until next week, if I get at least five questions on Sunday, I will see you then as well. Again, if you're watching on the replay, you can also comment and I will answer as well. Thanks so much for your time.